Hello, it's very good to have you with us at this hour. I'm Daniel Che here to provide you with the latest. South Korea's foreign minister is in Vientiane, Laos, to attend several meetings of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, or ASEAN in short, as well as numerous bilaterals on the side. One-on-one -on -one talks with his Chinese counterpart were expected to cover the North Korean nuclear issues and that. Kwon Sowa follows this report from the Laotian capital. Despite the extraordinary heat in Laos, talks among ASEAN members and related countries here are likely to raise the temperature a little more. South Korea's Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se began his official schedule with discussions on regional issues at the South Korea Mekong meeting that included Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar, Vietnam and Thailand. On Monday, he'll attend the South Korea ASEAN Foreign Minister's meeting and wrap up his visit with the ASEAN Regional Forum, which includes other Asian powers, along with the U.S. and Russia. Minister Yoon said he will focus on building more consensus on North Korea's continuous provocations during separate sideline talks, including with his Chinese counterpart Wang Yi late Sunday. Although it hasn't been long since our last meeting, we'll thoroughly discuss issues of mutual interest related to the progression of North Korea's missile and nuclear threats. He did not specify whether the deployment of the U.S. missile defense system THAAD, which China opposes, will be discussed or not. There is speculation that the issue may be on the agenda when Minister Wang meets with the North's Foreign Minister Li Yongho, who arrived in Laos on the same plane. Wait until we can let you know, then we will let everybody know. While B made no comments to reporters upon arrival, he did appear to nod when asked if he plans to meet with his Chinese counterpart on the sidelines. Seoul's Foreign Minister Yoon Byung-se is expected to send a strong message to North Korea at the ASEAN Regional Forum on Tuesday, when the two Koreas and all other members of the six-party denuclearization talks gather in one place for the first time since North Korea's fourth nuclear test early this year. Kwon Soa, Arirang News, Vientiane. The International Monetary Fund is expecting a positive outlook for the Korean economy, and it seems internal reports are also raising Korea's GDP growth forecast for next year. This comes despite the IMF cutting its expectations for global growth rates. Kwon jong looks beyond the numbers. For the first time in two years, the IMF is raising its growth forecast for the Korean economy. That's according to Korea's finance ministry, which revealed the details of an IMF report that coincided with a G20 finance minister's meeting held in China on Friday and Saturday. The report forecasts Korea's economy to grow 3 percent in 2017, up 0.1 percentage points from its official World Economic Outlook report released in April. The growth outlook for this year stood at 2.7 percent. Ministry officials cited the government's expected decision to approve a supplementary budget as a major contributing factor. The ministry expects the numbers to stay the same in the IMF's next official outlook report due in October. Sunday's report is in addition to an outlook update released on Tuesday that cut the global economic growth rate by 0.1 percentage points for 2016 and 2017, primarily due to Britain's decision to leave the European Union. The United Kingdom's June 23rd uh, vote to leave the European Union adds downward pressure to a world economy at a time when growth has been slow amid an array of pre-existing risks. The UK's forecast was slashed by almost one percentage point for 2017 to 1.3% growth, and the outlook has been reduced for the rest of Europe and Japan as well. But the IMF said the impact in other areas remain limited, with the US, Canada and emerging economies seeing minimal change. Kwon Jang-ho, Arirang News. South Korea's finance minister Yoo Il-ho has urged Korea and the European Union to continue to develop their free trade agreement despite concerns related to Brexit. Minister Yoo made the remarks while meeting with the Slovakian finance minister and current president of the EU Council, Peter Kazimir, on the sidelines of the G20 finance minister's meeting in China. He stressed that the Korea EU FDA, which was signed in 2009, has led to positive trade and investment developments on both sides. The two also discussed how to further develop bilateral economic ties between Korea and Slovakia. 
South Korea's biggest companies have not been so big when it comes to creating new jobs. According to research from Chebel.com, the nation's top five, Samsung, Hyundai Motor, SK, LG, and Lotte, have seen their combined assets grow to around $817 billion as of last year. From three years earlier, that's a spike of more than 15 percent. The big five have also expanded their influence in sales and net profit among Korea's top 30 largest companies, now accounting for more than 61 percent of all sales. But their contribution to employment has not grown proportionally. Since 2012, the five major players have increased their workforce by only 5.1 percent. And among the top 30, they account for less than 58 percent of employment, the same proportion as in 2012. In contrast, the other 25 groups boosted their employment by 5.2 percent. Incheon International Airport is setting new records in traffic as a number of summer vacationers flying in and out of the nation approaches its peak. Korea's main gateway has already broken its previous single-day record set in February at 181,000 passengers. This Sunday so far, it's over 189,000. And according to Incheon International Airport Corporation, that record won't stand long. They anticipate more than 190,000 passengers to come through the facility on July 31st. These numbers reach their yearly peak between July 16th and August 15th, when the airport is used by a daily average of more than 174,000 travelers. Turning our focus to the United States now, the Republican National Convention is over, and now it's the Democrats' turn in the spotlight. Hillary Clinton will officially become the party's presidential nominee. Our Kim Hye-sung has the latest on the race for the White House. Hillary Clinton will make history at the upcoming Democratic National Convention, becoming the first female presidential nominee of a major American political party. The Democratic National Convention kicks off at the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia on Monday at 3 p.m. local time and wraps up on Thursday with a speech from Mrs. Clinton herself outlining her vision for the country. Democrats from all over the U.S. will gather in the city of brotherly love, also known as the birthplace of democracy, to support Clinton and her newly announced running mate, Virginia Senator Tim Kaine. Throughout the convention, the Democratic Party will announce their campaign pledges and policies, and they hope bring reluctant supporters of Clinton's primary challenger, Bernie Sanders, into the fold. Big names like Michelle Obama and Mr. Sanders will appear for the opening night festivities billed as United Together. Former President Bill Clinton will close out night two, along with a group called Mothers of the Movement, made up of women who have lost their children in police-related shootings. President Barack Obama and Vice President Joe Biden will deliver keynote speeches on night three, followed by Hillary Clinton with her acceptance speech on the final night. Also appearing will be Clinton's celebrity supporters, including singers Katy Perry and Alicia Keys. Soon to be vice presidential candidate Senator Tim Kaine, a Harvard educated civil rights lawyer and a former National Party chair, will also give a prime time address. But once the confetti is cleared away and the delegates return home, the real game begins. The general election showdown with Donald Trump. Kim Hye-sung, Arirang News. In other parts of our world, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has signed a decree extending the period that some suspects in the recent coup attempt can be detained. As of Saturday, the maximum period authorities can hold suspects before charging them is extended to 30 days from four, a move criticized by human rights groups. It also orders the closure of institutions suspected of having ties to Fethullah Gulen, the U.S.-based cleric accused of masterminding the failed coup. Gulen, however, denied any prior knowledge of the attempted takeover. The closures would affect more than 1,000 private schools and 1,200 foundations and charities. Those include 35 medical institutions, 19 unions and 15 universities. The government argues the measure is necessary to prevent further unrest and insists it will only target those immediately associated with the plot. But there are concerns that crackdown has been widened to root out all potential sympathizers of Gulen's movement. Islamic State militants claimed responsibility for a suicide bombing in Kabul, Afghanistan on Saturday that killed at least 80 people and left more than 230 injured. This will be the group's first attack in the Afghan capital. The bombing targeted a peaceful protest in Kabul where thousands of the country's Shia Muslim minority gather in opposition to a new power line which they say bypasses the provinces where many of them live. According to the Afghan Interior Ministry, the coordinated attack involved three suicide bombers, one 
bomb was detonated, a second exploded prematurely, and a third bomber was shot dead by police. The attack is the deadliest to hit Kabul in 15 years. Over the years, Korean filmmakers have shown their strength in the genres of romance, history, action, and psychological thrillers. Well, now we can add to that list Zombie Apocalypse. The new film Train to Busan has set Korea's all-time record for the most-watched movie at cinemas in a single day. According to box office figures from the Korean Film Council, on Saturday alone, Korea's most hotly anticipated summer flick sold more than 1.28 million tickets to beat the previous record holder, Roaring Currents. Only in its fourth day of release on Saturday, Train to Busan had been seen by more than 4.1 million people. Its director, Yeon Zhang Ho, his latest effort depicts a group of passengers trying to escape a mysterious virus while on board a train bound for Busan, a southern port city that has, in the film, reportedly fended off a nationwide outbreak. And now the weather before we go. Another scorcher awaits on Monday if you are in Korea. Inland areas can expect some showers in the evenings, though. Temperature-wise, Hall, Gwangju, and Jeju will start the day all at 25 degrees Celsius. The mercury will shoot up all the way to 32 in the capital, the City of Lights, as well as the southernmost island. And now let's check out the weather conditions in other parts of our world. We've come to the end of our newscast. Here's wishing you a smooth transition to a new work week. Thank you for watching.